The Year Without a Santa Claus by Phyllis McGinley, illustrated by John Manders. The Year Without a Santa Claus. Have you been told? Did you ever hear of the curious, furious, fidgety year when Santa Claus unhitched his sleigh and vowed he was taking a holiday? How did it happen? This way, it was long ago before you were living. Not yet Christmas, but past Thanksgiving, though I can't give you the very date. Santa got up that morning late, pulled on one boot, then its twin, ruffled his whiskers on his chin, and sat back down on the side of the bed. Great North Star, I'm tired, he said. Painting wagons red and bright, bright, sharpening ice skates half the night, wrapping presents and rip, ribbons and gauze, has worn me weary, said Santa Claus, crick in my back, cold in my nose, aches in my fingers and all ten toes, and a sort of kind of a kink inside whenever I think of that Christmas ride. Into his workroom limped the saint. He sniffed the varnish, he smelled the paint, and reeling feeling came over him, stealing to see things crammed from floor to ceiling, rocking horses with shaggy manes, balls, dolls, electric trains, gloves, mitts, doctor kits, rubber boots, cowboy suits, kites for flying in parts, bicycles, Noah's arcs, and he started to shake and he started to shiver at the thought of the load that he soon must deliver. And he sighed, oh dear, as he buttoned his vest. I wish one year I could take a rest. When the words were out, he stood stock still, and then he whispered, I think I will. I will, he cried with his eyes ablaze. Everyone else gets holidays. Sailors and tailors and cooks do. Policemen and writers and books do. Tamers of lions and leopards. Preachers and teachers and shepherds and watchmen and scotchmen and Spaniards and Turks. Butchers and bakers and grocery clerks. They take time off at Christmas nears, as Christmas nears, all except me, so it appears, that, saint or not, it's time I got my first vacation in a thousand years. Out in the stable, nuzzling hay, the reindeer dreamed of Christmas Day, but Santa phoned to the reindeer groom, hang up the harness in the big storeroom. He called to his elves, he told each gnome, cover up the shelves, we're staying home. What? Cover the shelves, cried the gnomes and the elves. Cover the dolls and the electric trains and the rocking horses with the shaggy manes and the rubber boots for splashing in parks and the cowboy suits and the Noah arcs. Alas, alack, for they couldn't believe he wouldn't go riding on Christmas Eve. Put him away, roared Santa, vexed. This year's presents will do for the next. Warn the people, tell the papers, I'm much too tired for Christmas capers. Crick in my back, a cold that lingers, aches in my toes and all ten fingers. A bit of lumbago, touch of gout, climbing down chimneys is simply out. I may be the saint of Christmas nation, but this year, but this is the year of my first vacation. Well, you can imagine more or less what happened when that news reached the press. Headlines screamed, wires went humming, Santa says, too tired, not coming. And as the word flashed far and wide, you should have heard how the children cried. So violently they sobbed their griefs, the shops ran out of handkerchiefs. Their tears, tears filled up the kitchen sinks and cellars and empty skating rinks. They wept in school. At play they wept, they dampened their pillows while they slept before those darlings' eyes got drier. All the rivers rose three feet higher. And I don't know what would have happened quite, except for Ig Ignatius Thistlewhite. Ignatius Thistlewhite was a boy in Texas, or was it Illinois? Six years old, but brave for his years, he sobbed no sobs and he wept no tears, but stood up tall in his class to say, Santa deserves a holiday. No, 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 came the children's plaint. What is Christmas without our saint? Shucks now, fellows, gosh, good gracious. Christmas is Christmas, cried Ignatius, and everyone tells me whom, uh, whom I've met. It's a day to give as well to get, since all these years in the children's cause, Santa's been giving without one pause. Let's pull together in this Christmas weather and give this year to Santa Claus. Hooray, his classmates said. He's right, three cheers for Ignatius Thistlewhite. 
Fast as a hurricane, children hurled that happy message around the world over each continent, isle, and isthmus. Let's give Santa a Merry Christmas. With snow, the earth was already whitening, but they rolled up their sleeve and worked like lightning. They opened their piggy banks, racked their brains. They chartered buses and special trains and ships and sledges and hydroplanes to reach the, the pole by the 24th was all their goal. East, south, west, north came gifts and gifts and gifts to spare from clever children everywhere. Slippers with zippers to zip on, soap for his bath or to slip on, geraniums pink in a pot, one guppy, one puppy, one named Spot, balsam pillows, strawberry dam, dressing, ga dressing gowns with his monogram, ten harmonicas for him to play on, hand-painted pictures done in crayon, mufflers, pipes, an easy chair, and lots of winter underwear. In New York State, a boy called Pudge cooked him a plate of homemade fudge. The little girl guides of Britain each made him a scarlet mitten while the boy in Siam sent a Siamese kitten. They sent him lemon drops by the carton, ashtrays modeled in kindergarten, jackknives, pen wipers, cakes and crullers, and magic pencils that wrote three colors. Tots who hadn't a penny to spend wrote him letters signed a friend. And then they had more fun that strange December, they said, than they could ever remember. Up at the pole, in the fragrant hay, the idle reindeer dreamed at play. Comet nickered out for oats and corn, Dancer brandized his velvet horn, while sadly, sorrowly lounged at home, each idle elf and gnome. Santa sat poking the fire and blinking, but nobody knew what he was thinking. Then suddenly from the sky there came the sound of planes the, and heard the hoot and cry of ships and special trains. Noel t totaled the sledges, honk the buses cried, and out of his study window Santa put his head. He looked to the left, he stared to the right, he didn't trust his own eyesight. So many, so merry, so more and more packages were rolling to his front door. Smack at his door sill they thundered. A million, a thousand, a hundred flat ones and flat, fat ones, and lean ones, and crims, crimson and silver and green ones, broad ones and odd ones, and plain romantic ones, little, big, and great gigantic ones, parcels from London, Rome, Atlanta, and each addressed alike to Santa. Atop them all a banner glinted where Ignatius Thistlewhite had printed these words, good luck and holiday mirth from all the children upon the earth. With hoots, and toots and honks and light-hearted the buses turned and the trains departed leaving the saint surrounded by parcels piled to the polar sky santa was silent for a minute his eye looked bright but a tear stood in it then he blew his nose like a trumpet blast god bless my soul he said at last by the big borealis by my maps and charts i didn't know children had such kind hearts. How could a man feel gladder, prouder? He turned to his staff and his voice got louder. Gnomes, elves, every mother's son. Don't stand staring, there's work to be done. Bring in the barrels, fetch in the boxes, carry in those packages and don't break one. Where to put them? There wasn't a space in a parlor or study or any place. They overflowed bureau, couch, and table, filled the house, the sheds, and the stables, slid from mantles, jammed the casement, bulged from attic, and burst from basement. There's nothing to do, exclaimed the elves, except to empty some woodshop shelves. Off those shelves, then Santa forces, whisked the painted rocking horses. When the presents wouldn't fit, down came Kite and Dr. Kit. Still, there wasn't room for all, so away went basketball, cowboy suit, and rubber boot, bicycle, and talking doll. Till by the time the twilight reigned, not a single toy on the shelves remained. All were sacked and packed away in the one place left the Christmas sleigh. Then Santa gazed from floor to rafter and gave his mightiest shout of laughter. Laughed loud ho-hos, laughed vast ha-has. What a joke, he chortled on Santa Claus.
You might as well phone the reindeer groom to take down the harness to the big st in the big store room. Get me my gloves, the robe for my lap, and my coat and my warmest stocking cap. There sits the sleigh with the toys inside. So what can I do tonight but ride? What about your gout? The gnomes cried out. What about your aches and the crick in your spine? Pooh, laughed Santa. My back feel fine. Never felt younger. Never felt stronger. Haven't got a symptom any longer. And before the midnight bells go chiming, I'd like to do some chimney climbing. So harness the rain tear. Let them rip. It's time to begin my favorite trip. With a flurry and a scurry and a chatter in a hurry, they brought him to him his cap and his lap robe fury. They rose, roused the Cupid. They rubbed down Vixen. They polished the bells on Donner and Blixen. There were cheers from the gnomes, from the elves, applause. Then off the night, they, uh, then off through the night, flew Santa Claus. And I've heard the old people often say there never was such a Christmas day, never such joy after Santa swirled from rooftop to rooftop around the world. While at home of a sleepy boy in Texas, or was it Illinois, a special letter was left that night addressed to Ignatius Thistlewhite. It was clipped to the handlebars like a medal of the best two-wheeled a boy could pedal. Dear sir, was written in Santa's hand, please thank the children in every land. Tell them I'll take good care, I hope, of the puppy and the guppy and the slippery slope. I like my pipes, I love my chair, I do appreciate the underwear, and I pledge this promise on my sled and pack. Year after year, I'll be coming back. Vacations, I guess, weren't meant for me. I'll never want another one. Yours, S.C. And that's one reason you may believe why children are merry on Christmas Eve. You know yourself, as you hang your stocking, it doesn't matter if the winds are knocking. Through the storm falls heavy, though the though the storm falls heavy, though the great gale roars, though nobody else would budge outdoors, snug in your bed while the tempest drums, you can count your blessings on fingers and thumbs. For yearly, nearly, faithfully, truly, somehow, Santa Claus always comes.